For those of you who have been bored enough to watch multiple of my videos, you might recall two occasions where I developed film shot by different photographers decades ago. In the first case, I was developing film 45 plus years old that had some images of an infant as well as some kids in it. And in the second case, I was developing film from Gary the Photographer. These were large format images that overall came out pretty dang nice. The latter video in particular happens to be one of my favorites of all time, and that is because it gets to showcase the work of the very talented Gary the Photographer. His images were almost assigned to the dustbin of history because they were almost literally tossed in the garbage. I saved them, and these images became what are known as found photos. So that begs the question, what are found photos? By my definition, found photos are images that were taken by different photographers some period of time ago, whether the photographer is unknown or known, whether they passed away a hundred years ago or a couple of years ago, or maybe they're still alive. And then they could be negatives, they could be prints, they could be slides, Kodak transparencies, and they can be acquired either through family, through flea markets, through thrift stores, through a variety of ways. These images could long be forgotten. They could have been nearly thrown away or actually thrown away or they could have just been underappreciated. And what makes them found is that they can be appreciated for their historical, their aesthetic, as well as their artistic values. Unless you acquire these images from family, then you might wonder how you can acquire found photos, how they become lost in the first place. In many cases, found photos can be acquired, as I said previously, through thrift stores, through flea markets, through estate sales. Pretty much any way you can acquire a camera, a vintage camera, you can acquire found photos in my experience, and they could become lost either because the family doesn't really want them anymore, perhaps they were lost through some sort of repossession, and then there's no name to them, so they can't really be brought back to the original owner. So there's a variety of ways that happens. In my personal experience, if I do know that these images have a name to them, I would try and bring them back to the original owners or to the family of the owners, and if not possible, then in that case, I feel it's okay to keep them and to enjoy them for their artistic value. So now that you know how found photos can be purchased or acquired, as well as how they come to be, I think it's time to talk about what makes them so dang interesting, as well as what could make them problematic. First, what can make found photos problematic is that they can be of private family moments, perhaps meant to stay private, and perhaps they're moments that the family has lost and they would like to have returned to them. Of course, as I said, sometimes that's not possible because there's no name or additional information that comes with these photos, in which case you could either throw them away, which completely assigns them to the dustbin of history, or you keep them and perhaps they'll find their families once again. Now that we have talked about what can make found photos problematic, let's dive into some instances where I have found such images, why I enjoyed them, why I felt like they were sharing, as well as why I think collecting found photos can make you grow as a photographer. I found these disposable cameras at a thrift store recently. I could tell that they had both been exposed yet undeveloped. Unfortunately, I was able to buy them for 25 cents a pop, which you know gave me a little overhead on the matter. I had some color C41 negative chemistry that I was close to using up entirely. So I decided to toss these negatives in with it to see what came out. The first image had an expiration date of 2011 and the results were quite poor as one might imagine. Most of the photos were truly unremarkable, but I was able to tell that these were of a snowy day in my hometown of Paradise, California. I like these photos because one, nothing beats a snowy day in my hometown, and two, 95% of my hometown burnt to the ground in 2018, so this offers a little glimpse into what the town looked like prior to the fire. The second disposable expired in 1995, and it had images of a couple ladies on a cruise down to Mexico. I'm not too sure what part of Mexico this is, but nonetheless, came out pretty interesting. Looks like unicorn vomit, but that's just how expired film can be no matter what. The next set of photos came from a thrift store once again. These ones were color transparencies, and this thrift store, I remember it was my first time there, and it was one of those true classic dumpy thrift stores, which can sometimes yield great results. In this case, it certainly did. I went up to the cashier, asked, hey, do you have any cameras? Do you have any old like negatives or anything? Lo and behold, they received a whole box of negatives and transparencies less than like a couple days before. All in all, this box contained almost a thousand Kodachrome slides. 
as well as a couple cameras for the meager cost of $30. With all these slides, there are no names to go off of, but many had quite a few descriptions written on the slides themselves, offering a date as well as a location. Most of these images are from California and the Western United States during the 1960s and 70s, which all together is quite an attractive subject matter as a photographer. It's a nice mixture of family images, travel photos, as well as everything in between. Kodachrome just ages so well, and these images are no exception. I mean, what's to say about the classic Kodachrome colors, the contrast, they hold up so damn well, even if they're in a basement or if they're sitting outside in the middle of the damn desert. So as I said, many lovely images of California, and hey, there's a photo of old Ronnie Reagan giving a speech. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Going through this set of a thousand Kodachromes was a fantastic exercise of a photographer. Starting with a thousand photos, I was able to organize them and pretty much curate them as if it were a photo exhibit for your viewing today. Finding a particular theme, style, or subject throughout these thousand images can be quite the challenge, but that's what makes it so much fun. The next set of found images varies quite a bit from sunny California. These images were found at a flea market in Hanover, Germany, and it was a small little metal cassette. On the outside of this cassette, you can see that it was developed in Magdeburg, Germany, what was then Eastern Germany. So I thought I might be getting some negatives of life in East Germany, which altogether is quite interesting for me. Instead, I found something not entirely different, but nonetheless quite interesting. It was a uncut roll of Agfa color transparencies. The colors aren't quite like Kodachrome as you might imagine, but still quite nice given the age. And these were images of a trip to Moscow in about the year 1960. The next round of images came in a box of cameras, a classic box of cameras that I'd bought in on Facebook Marketplace. This was some time ago and I really was there for the cameras, but shoot, the negatives were a nice little side to it also. These old Kodagrams of the 1940s, 50s of this ranch nearby really remind me of my own family because we are at the same time pretty much doing the same thing, ranching in Northern California. These ranch Kodachromes weren't the only thing in this box of cameras worth including. There was also some undeveloped rolls of Kodak Panatomic X. This was bulk rolled Panatomic X from as far as I can tell the 1970s. It was buried at the bottom of this box. This box had been sitting out in the California summer heat for months. So as brutal of conditions as you imagine, and I had really low expectations for how they would turn out if I developed them. After putting in all the time to develop this Panatomic X, I was quite bummed once again, because it was just, I don't know, a couple rolls of 1970s bikini models. Kind of wish it was photos of flowers or perhaps someone's bar mitzvah but instead, girls in bikinis. That's too bad. In all seriousness though, wow. These results are amazing. These are the best results I've ever gotten on such exposed rolls of film. And what can you say, the contrast, the fogging was not even barely noticeable given the age. And this image right here has me asking a lot of questions. Kind of looks like the Reddit R analog front page most days, in fact. The next set of found photos were included with a stack of photo books I had bought on a local online auction. By the way, guys, check out local online auctions for camera stuff. And in any case, oh, oh yeah, I also got Jeff Bros's Approaching Nowhere in this auction. Amazing book. So anyways, these images, I don't know who they belong to, but nonetheless, Kodachromes of Japan in the 1950s, I believe, looking at the outside rim of the Kodachromes, 1957. Whoever took these photos was quite talented, and it's a shame that their name wasn't included with a lot. But nonetheless, you know, these portraits right here are just amazing and those Kodachrome colors steal the show once again. This last portrait in particular is among my all-time favorites. The color, the exposure, the subject, it's just all just pure perfection. The next photos came once again from a Box O cameras, another Facebook Marketplace purchase or Craigslist and not really part of the bargain, but nonetheless, I was happy to have them as well. I like these photos because I know what camera was actually used to photograph them. Usually you can't tell, especially if it's like 35 millimeter. But in this case, I was pretty much able to tell that this was shot with a Foytlander Bergheil 6x9 folder from the 1930s. This is a camera that was included with the box, so quite easy to make that inference. As a side note, the Foytlander Bergheil is a great camera. I've been able to use it a couple times now. Pretty compact, 6x9 and despite being from the 1930s, 
really is just gonna deliver some amazingly sharp black and white images. As an added bonus, there's actually a few more scratched up negatives at the bottom of this box, not from the Voigtlander Berg Heil. And they're actually of some guy's time in the army in the 1940s, 50s. For the most part, these images are honestly pretty shitty. They're scratched, they're blurry. But this last one actually has a guy sticking his Johnson out, which I thought was interesting and you guys are not allowed to see it. If you know me, then you know, of course, I'm gonna be saving some of my favorite photos for last. So let's dive into what would be the oldest, most dangerous and largest collection of found photos that I have found. These images were made by a photographer named H.W. Metz between 1910 and 1930. H.W. Metz lived in the San Francisco Bay Area and worked professionally as a photographer. He shot quite a bit using dry plate glass negatives as well as nitrate negative film. And for those who don't know, and for those who haven't seen Inglorious Bastards, nitrate film is a no bueno. It's known to spontaneously combust as well as just degrade and give this rancid vinegar-like smell. I actually did burn an old junk negative from this pile just to show you how dangerous it is. Diving into how his photos won't kill me, let's talk about just how his images capture a period of time and with a level of intimacy that you don't always find. Of course, a lot of these images are family life. A lot of these are from his travels on the West Coast up in Oregon. And a lot of them are actually of commercial work that he did at the time. During this period, H.W. Metz worked as a photographer at the 1915 Panama Pacific Exhibition. It was kind of like San Francisco's comeback party after the earthquake in 1906. H.W. Metz also tried his hand at landscape photography, spending time in Yosemite National Park just when young Ansel was spending his time there. And he also took some nice dry plate images of what I presume would be Muir Woods National Monument in Marin County, north of San Francisco. Tucked among the countless nitrate negatives was a fat envelope of images that really caught my attention. These photos were taken by Metz in 1921 on behalf of the U.S. Red Cross in and around the U.S. Virgin Islands. These images portray the U.S. Virgin Islands as it appeared a mere four years after the United States purchased islands from Denmark, which I didn't know about. So it's something you learn every day. That's a wrap on H.W. Metz's work, as well as some of my favorite found images of the last half decade. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you found some of the images fairly interesting, particularly of the 1970s bikini models, or perhaps of the guy sticking out as Johnson. In any case, I hope you guys are a little more inspired, perhaps to keep an eye out for such opportunities when you're looking for cameras or doing whatever you may do. And if you do, please tell me just what you find.